Welcome to the course. I'm Nick Lever and I've been working with Real Time 3D for over 20 years. In this course we're going to learn to create GLSL shaders. GLSL is short for OpenGL Shading Language. GLSL is a programming language of its own and it's similar to the C programming language. My aim is even if you've never coded before you'll be able to follow along with the course because we're going to look at the language from its basics. I think you'll find it's going to be fun. Here are a few of the shaders that you'll create in this course. While writing the shaders we're going to work directly in a browser using the website CodePen. That means all you need to work along with the course is a browser. I'd recommend Chrome. Since we're going to be using CodePen we'll be using a little JavaScript to set up our page ready for the GLSL code. We're also going to be using the popular open source library 3GS. This is a library that makes working with WebGL much easier. WebGL uses OpenGL ES under the hood. OpenGL is a fast library for working with 2D and 3D graphics. OpenGL ES is a version of OpenGL aimed at devices that might have more restricted hardware. So the code you learn to write will work great on mobile devices. WebGL allows us to use OpenGL in a browser. The course is mainly about GLSL, but in order to use GLSL, we need an OpenGL platform. We're not going to spend much time considering how to compile your shaders. This is all taken care of by the 3GS library. This allows us to focus on the GLSL code itself. If you want to learn GLSL but your platform's not a browser, then the course is still relevant because the GLSL syntax is common to each platform. The course is split into sections. Section 1 introduces some basic concepts. Section 2 you start to write your first shaders. In section 3 we look at shaping functions and in section 4 we start to look at the amazing flexibility of adding noise functions to your shader code. In section 5 we look at showing images or textures in your shader and how you can play around with these at lightning speeds. Each GLSL shader has two components. The fragment shader which is all about deciding the colour of a pixel and a vertex shader which is all about moving a vertex from object space to clip space. In sections 1 to 5 we use a simple rectangle and just concern ourselves with the fragment shader. Section 6 introduces vertex shaders for the first time, bringing you into the 3D world. If you want to work in 3D then you will probably want to add light into your shaders and this is what we look at in section 7. The 3GS library has several shaders that you can apply after the initial screen is rendered. We call this post-processing and section 8 introduces you to the amazing possibilities of using this technology. Finally in section 9 we will review all the amazing things you've learned. Whether you want to create amazing image transitions for a website or you're making a huge multiplayer 3D game GLSL is so worth learning and the methods of shader development apply even if you work in another shading language like HLSL as used by Unity. This video is taken from the course Learn GLSL Shaders from Scratch. A link to the complete course is in the description below.